Hello there. That's how the stream starts, with the towel. I don't know how many people are here, but we are going to start. Welcome to the Season 60 All-Pro Team Reveal. Um, what this is basically is how we used to do um, the All-Pro Vote, where instead of using the crap roster, that the crappy Pro Bowl roster that um, the game generates for us, we make our own and we don't vote just based on stats. We vote based on um, team impact. We vote based on um, individual success. We vote based on did they do well in spite of team success? So were they just good stats on a bad team? Were they decent stats and made the team better? Things like that, right? So it's not just looking at the stats and saying, these are the top three, these are the top three, whatever. So it may surprise you on who makes the team. Um, the other thing too, is that what we're gonna do after this, so I guess I can go to this next slide here. Um, what we're doing is we're gonna reveal the roster today. I'm gonna talk a little bit about each player and then we're gonna do games and the schedule will be at the end. So it'll show you what time your game's going to be played. So when you want to watch your players play, the schedule will be at the end. These are going to be two CPU v CPU games. So you'll get to see two complete rosters of players from our season uh, go at it. And there's something for the winners when this is all done. So I kind of just went over this after um, without actually clicking through this. So CPU versus CPU, we've done this a few times. Um, there's a first team all pro and a second team. Oh, gotta have the coffee, man. We're going to be doing this for a while. So I got to have it. Um, CPU versus CPU. Um, there's a wrinkle of coaches this year. So I'll show you how that works. And then, um, there will be something for the two winners without further ado. I'm going to make sure that we've got it working here. Let's see. I think this is working. I wish this would show me how many viewers we have. I probably have zero. I'm probably just talking to myself here. <clears throat> oh, wow, three. Okay, I guess that's something. Okay, well, without further ado, we're going to get into it. So we're going to start the AFC. AFC will be the first team we're going to run through. Um, we're going to start, we're going to go special teams, defense, offense, and I'll tell you how the AFC might take a little longer because we're going to show you kind of how this works. But um, so full disclosure, we had five people vote on the roster. I was not one of them. Um, basically, everyone got a certain amount of votes per position group. And then we determined based on that who was a first team, who was a second team. There are alternates. There aren't many. What an alternate is, is they will be in both games. So they'll be in the first team game and they'll be in the second team game. 
if they're in the first team game, all they're there to be is a backup in case of stamina. Um, I don't think that'll happen because we're going to make the stamina unlimited, but you never know how that works. And there won't be injuries, so there won't be players going out due to injuries. So an alternate basically means that they were good enough to make the all pro roster and be recognized, but they're not going to play more than likely. So we'll go to the first group here. So your kickers, there are no alternates for special teams. So you're going to have a second team and a first team. Your second team kicker, Cliff Oliver, Denver Broncos. So Trent's already getting in on it. And then Michael Badgley. Um, I like Michael Badgley a lot because he missed a potential game winning field goal in the Super Bowl last year. Thank you very much. Um, so Aston's Michael Badgley will play first team. So he'll be the first team kicker. He'll do all the kickoffs, he'll do all the extra points, all the field goals, etc. And then Trent's Cliff Oliver with the second team. Hey, <laughs> those Denver Broncos did score a lot of touchdowns. So they kicked a lot of field goals. Good for him. Um, good to see that Trent already got in on the action early. A um, couple guys were left off the list, but I think for the most part, this was right. Uh, the punters, little uh, AFC South action here. Um, first of all, best division ever for punters, right? Because they're all, yeah, they're okay on offense, all these teams. I mean, the Jags are pitiful now, but um, so Shane Pearson made the first team punter. Um, I believe he was top three in punts inside the 10 or inside the 20, and then Isaac Flanagan from the Titans. The second place foot was actually really close. Um, I don't have the ballot in front of me, but it was very close. There were a couple guys who could have made it too, but once again, for the first, we're, we're talking about punters here. Like, let's not get crazy. If you're getting worked up, if you're going to be disrespect to her, I know Texans made it, but you know what I'm talking about. If you're going to get all worked up about your punter not making it, you need a medical help. Let's just get that out of there right now. We're we're gonna do a third of a, a virtual simmed game. And if you're mad about your punter not making it, there's problems. Kick returners, John Ross. Um, I thought he was no doubt the best uh, return man in the AFC. Um, had all the touchdowns. Um, he led in touchdowns for return men. Uh, Daryl Henderson was the second team. Um, he I believe he had one touchdown, and he was also he was one of the rare returners who doubled as a punt returner. In the AFC, people didn't really do that. So um, I thought this was pretty easy. But John Ross, no doubt, was the top return man. Um, okay. Ian Johnson, Jake are watching. This is great. This is great. I'm actually enjoying this. This interface works pretty well. Um, so that's your AFC special teams. Nothing too exciting. Uh, we're going to move right on here to the defense. Um, we're going to start with the D-line. Um, we'll start with the second team and your first three to make the second team. There's your first alternate. Um, so Miles Garrett, Joey Bosa will be the starters in the second team game. Um, and Brian Prince was your honorable mention alternate for the AFC defense. Um, he had a good enough year where we thought he was worthy to be rostered, but he's probably not going to play. Um, but Prince did a lot. The problem with this stuff is that sacks are so over i talked to metal about it yesterday because he asked why cleveland farrell was left off the ballot for defensive player of the year it it doesn't really matter how many sacks you have anymore unless you lead the league in them and if you don't lead the league in them you have to be really good at like two other things to be in consideration i mean look at the ballot this year we had what one defensive end for defensive player of the year that's probably the way it should be right so um, it's tough when Bosa and Garrett are averaging like 30 sacks a season, but they're second team guys. So um, moving on to the defensive tackles, kind of fun here to see two teams we haven't seen yet. Um, Taven Bryan on the Jaguars and Ed Oliver on the Bills. So um, give Vance at all. I think that's how you say his name credit for keeping the good defensive pieces that he had. Um, I think he had a terrible free agency last year and overspent on a lot of really average players, but he kept good players around that he already had. Um, that team was screwed anyways, because Bird traded Terrence Watt away and got rid of for Alvin Kamara, which is the, just, we'll talk about that later. Um, but no, I really, Ed Oliver had a really good year, all things considered. Uh, Taven Bryan actually could have been a first teamer, but um, just due to the fact that the Jaguars were a CPU team, there were a lot of issues there. He still played good enough to be a second teamer. Uh, the first team uh, edge rusher slash DNs. 
I mean, there's no contest here. Um, Uchenna Nuoso, um, this guy's an MVP candidate. He's, I, I don't even know how many times he's won Defensive Player of the Year. Um, this guy is no doubt the best edge rusher in the league right now. So um, he's first team. Um, he led all defensive players in touchdowns with three. He had like five pass breakups as an outside linebacker. So it's absurd. And then Cleveland Farrell um, kind of blew up this year. I believe he had 37 and a half sacks. He was second in the league in sacks. Um, deserved to be first team. Just He's just not going to be on the defensive player. You're about, like we said, sacks are just oversaturated at this point where it's like, who cares if you're getting 28 sacks anymore, right? If you don't get 40, who are you even? Uh, finally, the defensive tackle first teams, Luther Phelps and Aaron Donald. Um, these guys were both unanimous selections, so pretty easy. Um, good for Eichem, first of all, to have a guy on the list despite his poor year. Um, Luther Phelps is unbelievable. He was like the 13th pick in his draft. And then Aaron Donald, obviously, has been an, a superstar since he maybe since he's been in the league. Um, he was really a big part of that change for the Ravens. For them to take that step when they got when he got traded from the Rams to the Ravens, of just um, taking that next step as a defense, he's got the pieces in the secondary, obviously, but you always need that pass rusher. So um, there's your defense um, on the D line. So the NFC will have to be blocking Nwosu, Cleveland Farrell, Luther Phelps, Aaron Donald in the first team game. Good luck with that. Um, linebackers. So there are going to be uh, three starters in each game. The second team linebackers, you're looking at another bill. And Tremaine Edmonds, Fred Warner, and Darius Leonard, the first Colt we get on the list here. Um, Edmonds was an easy pick, I think. Um, he just he doesn't do enough outside of tackles to be a first teamer, but he led the league in tackles outside of Mark Rainey. Um, Fred Warner's probably the best coverage guy on the Chargers in that front seven. And then Darius Leonard is, he's just a really good player. Just, he's on a bad team. So um, part of this list too, like I said, is we're not going to penalize good players for being on bad teams. It's going to happen, right? I mean, there are players on, I think most teams have, um, have a guy on these lists. So Darius Leonard, a really good year. I mean, there's no way around it. Just, just because the offense stinks doesn't mean he has to pay that penalty for it. Um, and you're looking at your first team, pretty easy. Um, all these guys were unanimous. Tyler Dubois, I believe his name is Dubois. Uh, Devin Bush, um, finally getting the recognition he deserves. Spence is just losing it right now. And Zach Cunningham of the Texans. Um, Dubois is probably the best of the group. Um, guy in the middle for that defense. Uh, Devin Bush, Fastest linebacker in the league, does everything he asked him to do. Zach Cunningham, really good player, creates turnovers. Um, pretty self-explanatory. These guys are, I mean, this is this is as good as it gets for the AFC. Um, the thing is, it's not as deep in the AFC when we were looking at linebackers. A couple guys that you could have thought about were like Kurt Chatham on the Browns. Um, there's another guy in the Chargers, I think. But for the most part, I think this is the right group. So, um, moving on to the secondary, this group is unbelievable. So we'll start with the uh, corners on the second team. So you're going to get three corners that are going to start in your second game, and then your alternates will be in both games. So Greedy Williams, Marlon Humphrey, Xavier Howard are the second teamers on the AFC, and then Nolan Hall and Denzel Ward will play in both games as alternates. So they'll be the fourth and fifth corner if it gets into a scenario where that has to happen. Um, Greedy Williams, best corner on the Browns this year, which is weird because Denzel Ward's on the team. Um, he led in pass breakups. Um, they didn't catch a ton of like the, the corners didn't catch a lot of picks, but you tell they were all over the field. I mean, the defense is unreal. So, um, Marlon Humphrey, um, had a couple interceptions. Xavier Howard actually had quite a bit this year. Um, all three of those defenses were really good. And those guys were a big part of that. Nolan Hall was the only defensive player on the Bengals worth anything. So I'm um, glad to see he made it. And then Denzel Ward is an alternate. Um, it's one of those things where on the best pass defense in the league, second best pass defense in the league, um, you got to give credit to these guys. It's not just the pass rushers. It's the corners as well. Uh, the safeties, Derwin James and Earl Thomas. Earl Thomas could have been a first teamer. Um, the guy is doing it at age 72. I have no idea how he's doing it. 
Um, but he had nine interceptions, I think. Uh, Derwin James is unbelievable. He led the league in forced fumbles, I believe. Um, so these guys are slam dunks. Um, just looking at the chat here. Look at all these comments. I'm happy about it. Uh, cornerbacks for the first team, uh, Lee Madden, Lyle Hughes, and Kenny Moore. So Kenny Moore, first of all, um, was a free agency signing by Spencer. Uh, great signing. He was, uh, they missed the playoffs, obviously. But um, Kenny Moore was probably the best corner that got signed in last year's free agency. And he paid like $12 million a year for him. As opposed to Fuller, who got paid like $30 million. Um, Moore was unbelievable. Lyle Hughes really took a step for the Broncos and Lee Madden's a stud. I mean, he's the guy on that defense in that secondary that can shadow a number one receiver, follow him all over the field. Um, all of these guys created turnovers. So really like what Trent's done with his secondary. It's just, he's terrible on offense. So that really kills him. Um, good, j- good job by Spencer. And then the safeties, um, pretty obvious who one of them was going to be Jamal Adams, uh, guys, a freak. He's all over the field. He makes things happen, forces fumbles, creates interceptions, um, the tackling leader on their team. And then LeVon McKee, I believe is how you say his name. Um, he was on the defensive player of the year ballot, uh, led the Ravens in picks, um, led them in touchdowns, uh, had a couple sacks. I think he was top. He was the top secondary player in tackles for loss for them. Does it all. I mean, the guy's an absolute stud. So, um, yeah, he plays out of his own. So what? You, what are you going to fight him about it? Uh, with that, we go on to the AFC offense. So your defense. I mean, your defense is going to be in the first team. You got that group of edge rushers we already talked about. You're going to have this group of linebackers. So Bush, Cunningham, and Dubois. And then you're going to have um, basically the Ravens secondary with Jamal Adams, Lyle Hughes, and Kenny Moore. So good luck. Good luck, NFC. I think we're going to win, though. I really do like the NFC roster, but we'll see. Um, All right, the quarterbacks. So there will be one alternate quarterback. There will be a one second team quarterback and one first team. The alternate will be there to hold extra points to basically appear. So you can feel good about yourself that you had a guy in the roster. And like I said, if something happens, the stamina is there. So um, Lamar Jackson's your alternate. And then uh, Tyree Jackson is your second team starter. Um, Aston's really done good things with Jackson since he, since for the past couple of years, kind of started out iffy with him when he traded for him. Everyone thought he's going to be a superstar, but it didn't work out that way. Um, but he's been a lot better the, the past two seasons. He has been unbelievable with him. So um, getting the run game going was huge. And then finally your starting quarterback. I don't think that anyone's going to be surprised by this Baker Mayfield, um, Ian John's, did everything this year in terms of taking a step um, on defense, on offense, um, the additions he made in the off season uh, Mayfield gets the ball out faster than any quarterback in the league. Um, he, he led the league in completion percentage for like the first half of the year. There was a point where he had like a 14 to zero TD INT ratio. Um, he, he finished the year with most touchdown passes Not the most yards, but the most touchdown passes. So, I mean, guy's an MVP candidate. Um, I voted for him to win it. So, I think he is the the thing that makes that offense run. And, obviously, um, they put a good game plan around him. So, um, you're going to have Baker throwing all these guys. It's going to be – it's going to be something. Uh, Moving on to the running backs in this AFC offense – uh, we're going to start with the fullbacks. No one's going to hold their breath over the first and second team. So – Byron Connors, this the fullback for the second team, and Patrick Ricard is the fullback for the ch- uh, first team from the Chargers. Um, Patriots actually committed to the run game this year and did a pretty good job at it. And Connor was up there as a utility fullback, and then Ricard obviously led the way for Crawford. Um, not reinventing the wheel here with fullbacks. Like I said, with the punter thing, if you're getting worked up about your fullback not making it, um, seek medical help immediately. Um, running backs, Bernard Crawford was, um, very close. He's, he led all running backs and receiving yards and touchdowns. Um, guy took a huge step this year. He got jukebox. So what do you think? And then Akil Williams 
from the Colts made it as an alternate. Let's just put this out there right now. Running backs in the AFC were not good. So him making it, he actually had a good year. So don't take it as like he was a, a throw in at the last second. After these three, you'll see the third here. I mean, you know who it is. Um, after these three, it falls off. It's bad. So, I mean, there's like eight teams in the AFC where it's like they don't have a lead running back. So, and finally, no surprise here, Hassan Elliott the, um, led the league in rushing yards, attempts, um, for the amount of attempts he had. He still had over five yards a carry, which is absurd. Um, the only weird thing is he doesn't catch the ball, which he would be probably the best weapon in the league if he did. But um, Black Magic committed to running the football. Um, he's the guy. He He's healthy going into the playoffs. Going to be huge for them. I think um, they're going to be sneaky. But in this AFC game, um, he'll be the bell cow with Baker Mayfield. So this offense is going to be fun to watch. Um, receivers. This is the second to last part of the AFC offense. Uh, start with the tight ends on the second team. You got Chris Herndon and Dustin Schaefer. Dustin Schaefer, the rookie, probably the favorite for rookie of the year right now um, on the Patriots, but a couple of AFC East tight ends. Herndon's been actually very good for the Jets, just kind of underrated because he's on the Jets and nobody really talks about them. Um, the second team wide receivers, a pair of Chiefs, uh, Darnell Blue. Some may say that he was snubbed of the first team, but um it's tough when they win the amount of games they did and um, kind of down the stretch there. Um, Juju Smith-Schuster had a really good year for the Steelers, no doubt their leading receiver. But uh, kind of fun for Eichem to see a pair of wideouts here with Tyreek Hill, Darnell Blue. Um, so that'll be fun for them in the second team game. First team tight ends. Uh, once again, Titans and Texans going hand in hand with punters and tight ends. Um, Sean Rollins was uh, head and shoulders above everybody else. He was unanimous. And then TJ Hawkinson, a uh, really good trade for the Texans. They traded, um, I believe, a second round pick to the Lions for Hawkinson. And he immediately was the guy in their offense. They really haven't had a tight end. I think they had like Ian Thomas or someone who just kind of stinks. But um, Hawkinson came in, was very good for them, almost had a thousand yards. Um, so good for them. So it'll be Rollins and Hawkinson on that offense. And then finally, the wideouts. You've got Dale Kaplan, Marquise Brown, and Amari Adkins. Uh, controversial. Amari Adkins was not unanimous, but he did make the first team. Um, I do believe that some of the voters were weary about if everything was legitimate that he did, if if the, he was force-fed, if some of those games were unnecessary or not. Um, but it would not make sense for him not to be a first team. He had 2,000 yards, 22 touchdowns, led the league in everything in terms of a wide receiver. Um, Marquise Brown and Dale Kaplan, they continue to do what they do. But for Atkins, that was the controversy there. But I think these are right. Um, there's no doubt that those are the three best wide receivers in the AFC um, and those tight ends. So for Mayfield to have Elliott, this group of wideouts, this group of tight ends, that uh, that first team offense is going to be a handful. Um, O-line, who is going to be blocking for these guys? Hold on, I got to grab something here quick. This is fun. This is uh, this is interesting. I'll say that much. I hope you guys are enjoying this because I am. It's killing my work day. Um, hold on. There may be like a couple breaks in this because I got to do something on my work computer. Okay. How many people are watching this? Can someone post in the chat how many viewers I have right now? Yes, I am wearing pants. No doubt. 14. Holy crap. All right. Well, let's go into the O-line here. So we're going to start with, uh, by the way, you're going to see this, uh, this team a lot in the O-line section. Um, so the uh, Browns are going to have a lot of players in the O-line section. Uh, Randall Stafford is the second team center for the Browns. Um, the rushing th attack was unbelievable. The passing attack was efficient. Uh, Mayfield was the least sacked QB of all starters, I think. Uh, I checked yesterday, and I believe he was. Um, 
so you're going to see a lot of Browns on this list. Um, going to the second team guards, Walt Matthews and Jack Mason. Very surprised about the Jets O-line. Blueprint has not had a good cycle in terms of building his defense, in my opinion, and building the weapons around his quarterback and quarterback. <laughs> let's let's just say that. Um, so the O-line that he's built is actually very solid. And he probably is the best center in the league. Um, Walt Matthews, a starting guard, made the second team. Um, don't know who he's blocking for because it's going to be Russell Wilson or that other guy he traded for from the Bucks. but um, good for him. And then Shaq Mason was a free agency signing by the Raiders. Or no, he traded for him. Um, but uh, Raiders committed to the run with that mediocre quarterback and did a good job. Um, the tackles on the second team, uh, Ronnie Stanley on the Titans and Derek Roy on the Patriots. Um, once again, the Titans committed to the run. Stanley did a great job holding up in that and decent in pass protection. Um, Derek Roy had a really good year. He was really um, the the bright spot on that Patriots O-line. Um, so good to see Beach get a little recognition for um, having, if he didn't turn the ball over so much, he would probably would have won the AFC East, but he had like 31 interceptions. Um, so there's your second team O-line, the starting center. I mean, I kind of gave it away, but I think you would know who that is if, you paid attention at all to uh, statistics around the AFC. Ross Jennings is the best center in the AFC, and he has been for probably the last four seasons. Um, guy's unbelievable. He doesn't give up sacks. He's atop his position at nearly every statistical category. So it's a no-brainer, and he had another great year in season 60. Uh, the guards, um, Wyatt Beck, another Jet. So three Jet O-linemen are going to make the first team, or the, the All-Pro, rather, and then Cole McIntosh and the Browns, the Browns actually traded away a superstar guard because they had Cole McIntosh coming. So they had an embarrassment of riches so they could cut salary and save their three plus one. Um, moving on then to the tackles. What I tell you, this was the best left tackle to right tackle combination in the league. Um, they combined for under 10 sacks, which is absolutely unheard of in the current state of this game. Um, so four Browns, three Jets make the All-Pro team. Um, Baker Mayfield will have his both his tackles, his guard, and his wide receiver on his offense. So um, AFC is going to be fun. Um, I think they got it right 100% in this. Um, there were a couple linemen that could have made it, but just due to the success of the team's offense, it was tough to put them in here. But um, for the most part, Good job, Ian Johns and Blueprint, on building up these offenses. It's pretty incredible. Um, let's move on here now to the coordinator. So this is the new part. Um, these guys do not know about this. So the coordinators are going to be the coaches on the field. They are going to essentially um, pick the playbook, pick the scheme. They're going to have access to their entire, entire pool of players and be able to do with them what they will. Obviously, the game will still be simmed, but these guys are going to be in charge of putting together the plan, if that makes sense. So your second team coordinators, um, Black Magic is the offensive coordinator and CAD is the defensive coordinator. Um, credit to both of these guys. Um, Black Magic, best rushing team in the league. The guy commits. He finds ways to win without really passing the football. Um, he's given away every single receiving weapon that he has. I mean, Hopkins, Fuller, um, Wilkinson. Um, I mean, he had three deep at one point where he could have just been, you know, the take the top off the defense guy again, but he committed to the run game with Elliott um, built around him. I think Cat, he's, I mean, it's the best defense in the league on paper, um, probably outside of the Chargers and the 49ers. Um, I mean, he's, loaded four or five deep at corner. He's got two all pro safeties. He's got Aaron Donald. He's got Dubois in the middle on the linebacker position. He built an awesome defense and he's very good at playing defense now. Sure. He, we saw what he did yesterday. What are you going to do? I mean, what are you going to do? Suspend him in the playoffs? What are you going to do that for playing on your zone? Um, first team coordinators. Ian John's got both of them. Um, the committee rewarded him for his 14 and two season. Um, the offense was sufficient. Uh, we've talked about the Browns a lot in this. 
The offense was efficient. Um, it was productive. It had a superstar wide receiver. Um, they blocked well. They have probably the best or second best quarterback in the league right now. Um, a really good one two punch at running back. And we'll say it again the offensive line. I mean, top to bottom in the AFC, there is no group that can match this, this um, personnel on paper, in my opinion. Um, the way he executed this year was great on offense. I think he deserves it on defense, um, smothered opponents. Um, you could put an asterisk by the two and say that he went 15 and one because of that, the shenanigans with the Raiders. Um, the defense is unbelievable. Just like can, he built it up. Um, he actually moved quite a bit of the pieces out besides miles Garrett in the corners. Um, I ripped him for that safety signing, but he had a really good year for him actually. Um, I think this is deserving. It's, it's not what I expected. I did not expect the voters to put him at both, but they're rewarding him for a great year. And I, I agree with it. I do. I don't think there's a better offensive coordinator or defensive coordinator in the AFC this year. So um, with that, that's your AFC. So the AFC is set. Um, stay, please stick around to watch the NFC. Obviously if you're an AFC guy, um, NFC special teams. So this is going to be the group going up against that group. So we're going to see um, if we can match up or not. Uh, starting with the kick returners. A couple of NFC North guys, Spencer Bruton and Kerry Copper. Spencer Bruton was hands down the best return guy in the NFC. Uh, led all returns and touchdowns and yards in attempts. Um, and then Kerry Copper uh, was kind of in this tier of, so Spencer Bruton's here. And then there was like a tier of guys here and copper emerged, uh, barely. So there are a couple other guys we could have given it to, but I like the pick here. He didn't have many attempts and he, his average was pretty high. So I, I tend to agree with that. Um, the punters, Bradley Pinion and Riley fine on the bears. Um, Pinion was the best punter in the league, I think. So deserved, and then Riley Fine, his average was high. He, he had a ton of attempts, um, and his inside the 20 ratio was pretty high for the amount of attempts he had. So um, finally, the kickers, Zane Gonzalez, um, first team, and then Jason Sanders, second team, so a couple NFC West. Um, up until week 17, Gonzalez was perfect on extra points and field goals. He missed a field goal in the final game of the season um, due to lag. So that's my excuse. Um, and was perfect in extra points. Uh, Jason Sanders, um, I believe went hundred percent in extra points and then went like 96% on field goals. So, um, no competition here really. Um, there were a lot of good kickers around the league this year, but I think the four that were picked between the NFC and the AFC were the right four, um, going on to the defense here is going to be the front seven for the NFC, trying to go up against that freaking Browns offensive line and Jets O line. Um, start with the second team, um, Tristan Hill, many will say was snubbed, but the two in front of him are so unbelievable that it actually makes sense. And then Leonard Williams, a nice surprise, um, probably the best run stuffing defensive tackle in the league right now. Um, if you had to go around the league and look, um, unbelievable in terms of tackles for loss, he's not a pass rusher. But the reason the Panthers defense took a step this year was because of his play next to Brian Burns. Um, Tristan Hill's unbelievable. Do not take a second team um, nod as a slight on him. He's a great player. The defensive ends, uh, you're going to look at, first of all, DeMarcus Lawrence will be the alternate. So if for some reason that we need a guy to step out, uh, Lawrence will be that guy in both games. Um, Benjamin Gilbert and Montez Sweat. So Gilbert came from the Lions in that really big trade they did last year um, and transformed the defense, I would say. Gilbert is the pass rusher they've been looking for after they get rid of Donald. And he comes in and he has 30 sacks and he, he does everything in the run game you ask him to do. And um, yeah, I mean, he's he's a transcendent player. So And he took that Rams defense to the next level and look where they are now. Um, two games out of the NFC West and a fifth seed in the NFC playoff picture. Montez Sweat just does it every year. He's the best defensive player the Redskins have. Um, he's a 29 to 30 sack guy every single season. So 
I, I thought this was a no-brainer. And then Lawrence, once again, is an alternate. Um, it's tough. I mean, d- defensive line is such a tough position to find a way to get to the top unless you lead in categories, like multiple categories. Uh, going to the D tackles here on the first team, uh, Buckner and Jeffrey. Both these guys were unanimous. Uh, Buckner has been doing it since day one. Uh, he is probably next to Nuosu um, and a couple other guys. He's probably the most unstoppable guy in the middle of any defense in the league. Um, take it, take my word for it. He is a problem every single time you snap the football, be it in the run game, be it in the pass game. He wrecks your offensive line. I have like a 94 overall center and it just doesn't matter. He's a problem and he is, he's unstoppable and he deserves to be one of these two. And then Leroy Jeffrey, um, after the Lions gave up Gilbert, you wondered if that was going to impact them defensively. Uh, Jeffrey stepped up, had 30 sacks, led all defensive tackles in sacks, um, had a ton of tackles for loss. Um, I believe he had a few forced fumbles. Guy's a playmaker and the Lions, he's a homegrown talent. So it's pretty awesome to see him get up here. And then finally, the D ends for the NFC. I think you can guess who these are going to be your usual suspects. Um, Terrence Watland, the league in Zach's this year. He's on the, he's probably the defensive player of the year. One of the favorites. Um, he's, I wouldn't say that he's the defensive line favorite in that group. Um, Christian McFadden has been doing it since he got drafted by Toff. Um, 35 sack a year guy. Um, game record for him. He leads that defense in almost everything. He's the engine that makes it go. So um, the NFC will have Watt, McFadden, Buckner, Jeffrey in their first team. So pretty good. I think, I don't know if the Browns are going to be able to handle that. Um, moving on to the linebackers, um, the second team. So we're going to start with these three here. Um, you've got Tyler Farley on the Redskins, Devin White on the Bucks. So the first appearance by a Buccaneer. And then Hassan Reddick on the Seahawks. Um, Farley's the best linebacker that the Redskins have. White is the most athletic linebacker in the lead outside of Devin Bush. And then Reddick was a free agency signing by the Seahawks a couple of years back. And um, next to Mark Rainey, the rookie. Um, one of the better linebacker duos in the league, if not the best. So um, this seems pretty right to me. Good for Silk to get a player on this list too. Um, Oops. And then the first team, um, the aforementioned Mark Rainey, Roquan Smith, and Deion Jones. And yes, all three of these guys were unanimous. Um, Mark Rainey had a rookie year that is pretty unprecedented. It's it's towards the top of all defensive rookies we've ever had. Uh, Led the league in tackles. Um, I believe he was top five in tackles for loss. Um, The guy was just a playmaker from day one, and he was a huge piece of that defense. Uh, Roquan Smith does it every year, but it's the Bears, so it's hard to talk about him. And then Deion Jones was awesome for the Falcons. Um, He's right up there in that tier with Bush and with... um, What's his face? We just, uh, um, white. He's right there with Bush and white in terms of, um, athleticism. So he's all over the field. He makes plays in the run game. He makes plays in the pass game. Um, he was the big piece for that Falcons defense this year. Um, this group is easy. I think that this was, these were the six best linebackers in the NFC, no doubt. And I think that those three, uh, Rainey Smith and Jones were, head and shoulders above the next three. So they have, the voters absolutely got this one right. So <clears throat> I'm going to have a little sip of my coffee here. This is fun. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take a little peeky at the chat. Any big disagreements yet? Any big ones yet? All right, let's keep going. Secondary. We're going to start with the second team safeties. Jabril Peppers and Ronnie Harrison. Um, Jabril Peppers famously was traded for that top five pick that I have ripped Silk New Oblivion for. But you cannot um, argue that he's a playmaker. 
he he's Jamal Adams Jr. I would say um, they're very similar in the way they play, um, the way that their stats translate. Um, he's a great player for Silk because just he's a safety, so it's really hard to justify ever paying the premium that he did. And then Ronnie Harrison, um, Jake has outside of the Chargers and the Ravens the best one-two punch at safety in the league. And Ronnie Harrison is part of that duo. Um, does everything for Jake. He's an X factor guy. Um, it's, it's a, it, one of the things. So I'm, I'm pretty anti paying safeties, but if you have a pair back there that have abilities, it's very difficult to pass on just because they can warp across the field and do those hit stick animations or the zone Hawk ability. Um, so the investment makes sense for me. Both these guys are very good players. It's just one does more for his team than the other. Excuse me. Moving on to the cornerbacks. Uh, both of the alternates um, are Cam Donald and Chidobia Woozy. And then the three corners that are going to start on the second team are Stefan Pierce, Mike Hughes, and Niles Ball. Um, the Rams corners this year were kind of um, similar to the Ravens where um, – the, the picks were all spread around, but everyone got in on the action. Uh, Mike Hughes is really the only secondary playmaker for the Vikings. I mean, Manns has neglected that team for so long um, that Malik Hooker was an impact on defense for them, and he's like 32 now. And then Niles Ball, first overall pick, um, he missed four games this season, but he still had great stats. He had uh, He had four interceptions. Um, was up there in terms of tackles. He played like he kind of played like a safety in a way, um, and Sin's really good at using him. So um, I think these guys were no doubt the best second teamers. Uh, Cam Donald and Chidobia Woozy. Chidobia Woozy made the team. He's the best corner on the best pass defense in the league. Um, his stats don't blow you away, but he's no doubt a part of that. And then Cam Donald, really solid season for the for the Cowboys. The Cowboys did not lose nine games because of their defense. So him getting acknowledged in that secondary is a good thing. Um, going on to the first team safeties, these guys were both unanimous as well. Eddie Jackson and Keanu Neal. Um, Eddie Jackson was unbelievable this year for the Bears. He did everything, uh, led them in almost every uh, stat outside of tackles. And then uh, Keanu Neal, um, just another one of the Falcons playmakers. I mean, they have, they have so many fast playmakers on that defense and him and Jones are in that. So, um, Putting Jackson and Neal back together in the secondary will be fun. And then finally, the corners on the first team, you're going to be looking at um, Lattimore, Byron Jones, and Will Beattie. So another Ram corner, uh, which makes sense to me because that secondary top to bottom is probably the best in the NFC. Um, Byron Jones, great year for the Panthers, despite a 6-10 and 10 record. And then Lattimore has been the best corner in the NFC since the Lions traded for him. And yes, I am saying that even when he was with the Saints, the way that the Lions use him, um, the way he's produced on that defense has really elevated his game. I think the way that Moji played the game did not benefit to Lattimore's abilities in the way that we does, does, if that makes sense. Um, but I think these three were right. Um, I like to see Jones getting recognition despite the six and 10 record. Um, he's one of the better players on that team. And despite their six and 10 record, it's good to see him there. Um, moving on to the quarterbacks. So we will show you the second team in the alternate first. After I take another rip of this. Mm -mm -mm. I should have drank out of my commissioner mug that Spencer got me. <sighs> okay. So second team quarterbacks, Dwayne Haskins is the second team quarterback. And then Danny Morse is the alternate. Um, you really could have picked a couple guys for the alternate, uh, Darnold Morse. Um, there are a couple other guys. Um, it was a, it was a rough year for quarterbacks in the NFC. Um, despite the offenses, a lot of picks. So Blake Donnelly had like 33 interceptions. Um, I'm just trying to think. Josh Allen didn't have the year he usually has. Um, Duncan McBride didn't throw a lot of touchdowns. It was kind of a down year statistically. So the three that were here, I think, were right. I the only one I would say that could have been here was Darnold, but I think Morse was the right pick. Um, Haskins was great. Um, he is a MVP candidate. He is an Offensive Player of the Year candidate. Um, 
he is no doubt the second best quarterback in the NFC this year. He has been a top three quarterback in the NFC for his career. Um, Jake has done a great job with him. Um, if not for the guy in front of him, he probably would be the best quarterback in the NFC right now based on abilities, like getting more abilities. Um, first team, uh, Kyler Murray, no doubt led the league in yards, um, over 5,000 again. Um, second in touchdowns with 36. Uh, MVP from last year, um, MVP candidate again this year, um, 77% completion, which is, I mean, that's very high. I'm not going to like pat my guy in the back too much, but um, I think he deserves it. Um, the The offense is the reason why I'm in the playoffs. My defense is terrible. So, and he's the guy that makes that work. So, um, very happy with him getting there. And it will be very fun to see him quarterback uh, this team. So, um, I think that this group is 100% correct. Uh, going with the running backs here. Fullbacks. Nick Bodden and Aries McKnight, a couple of NFC East guys. Um, I think Nick Bodden's the best fullback in the league. Um, the the Cowboys have the best one-two punch at running back in the league, and Nick Bodden leads the way for those guys. I think this was a pretty easy pick. And then Aries McKnight, um, Saquon Barkley had a really good year, and McKnight was a part of that. The Giants actually use him quite a bit, so um, good to see him make the second team. Uh, going to the backup running backs here, uh, Tariq Cohen will be the second team running back, and then Tony Pollard is the alternate in both games. Um, Zeke did not have the year that he typically has, and Pollard kind of exploded onto the scene and I think is surpassing Elliott as the guy on that roster. Um, so good to see him make the team. Cohen was the bright spot on an otherwise horrific Bears offense. I mean, let's not mince words here that the Bears offense is pitiful. But Cohen was great, so it's very good to see him make the team. He did everything a good running back should do. So uh, the first team running back is Barkley. And with Sin manning the controls of the Giants, you finally got to see what Barkley is capable of because, I mean, um, it's had Corn, Aaron, and now Sin. So going through that group, no disrespect to Corn, obviously, um, but – neglected is probably the right word to use. And with sin manning the controls. Now you finally get to see what Barkley can do with a full load and an offense that's catered to his strengths, um, led the league in all purpose yards, um, touchdowns, I believe from a rushing standpoint and healthy he played all 16 games, which is a feat for a running back. So very happy to see Barkley make the list. Um, going to the receivers here. We're going to start with the tight ends, um, Anthony Chavez and George Kittle. Uh, first 49er to make it, which is pretty crazy. Um, that's, I mean, he, he went nine and seven, but barely missed the playoffs. But um, normally by this point, Kate should be all over this. But um, Chavez is your your classic um, guy taken in whatever round he was in and practice squad guy and worked his way up the depth chart. Now he's a star. And he um, is the go-to guy for Haskins in this offense outside of Fuller. Great to see him make the team. It was fun to see like an underdog story. He's one of the he's one of the few guys in the league this year that was taken late, older player, and developed into what he has become. So it's very good to see. Um, George Kittle, no real explanation needed here. He is he's the guy in this offense for Allen. He's always open. He's got that yards af run after the catch ability. Uh, contested catches, he's going to win almost every time. So uh, Kittle, no doubt, should be here. Going to the receivers, uh, Calvin Ridley, Devontae Adams, and Michael Thomas. Um, you throw these guys, I mean, if I didn't have that second team there, you could you could guess this is the first team, right? I mean, these guys are studs. Um, Pat brought Adams back on a contract. He let him hit free agency and then signed him back and had a great year again. Thomas has been unbelievable for Toff since he traded for him. And then um, in the what the hell are you doing moment of the year, Ramesu sent Ridley to the Saints in a division trade in the biggest weakness on Moji's roster and gave him Calvin Ridley, who's great. I mean, shocker. Darnold hasn't had a weapon that he can rely on in New Orleans. And Ridley came in and was the guy. So good job, Ramesu. We're happy for you. Um, first team tight ends, Mark Andrews and David Njoku. Um, 
Andrews has been probably the best tight end in the league the past four seasons. Um, has been consistent in leading the league in yards, receptions, and touchdowns at the position. So pretty easy there. And then Njoku was a nice surprise. He came in a trade um, with the Eagles uh, to the Saints. So good job, Beat. You didn't need David Njoku, obviously. Um, but yeah, sent him over here. Um, he does it in the rush and receiving game. He does a lot of end around plays, which is bizarre. Um, but no, Njoku is a great player. Um, he was so adding Ridley and Njoku really opened up the offense here for the Saints. Njoku has been a safety blanket for Darnold. So having him there has been absolutely huge for them. And then finally, the first team receivers. Um, Isabella Hardman and Winkler. So Winkler and Isabella are very similar. They're both uh, slot guys who are very fast. And then Hardman is your your classic burner. He's a Tyree kill um, in the offense with Goff. Goff. Goff was a guy who could have been in that quarterback mix, but he had like 22 interceptions. Um, Hardman's the guy in that offense that takes the top off the defense, is your big hitter, home run hitter guy. Uh, Isabella led the league in receptions. Um, he leads the league in yards after the catch. And then Winkler is very similar. He does. Um, he's the safety blanket in that Rams offense for Morse. So um, it's an interesting group because it's not really like your big Michael Thomas or your Adams or your, I'm trying to think like Adkins, but it's a lot of speedy guys who are going to be really difficult to cover over the middle. Let's move on to the old line here. I'm going to check chat one more time. Let's see how it's going here. Oh, weed's brutal. Okay, weed's, weed's bitter. Um, O-line, start with the centers. Um, James Martinez and Brendan Cooper are the first and second team centers. Um, Martinez, um, the center for the best offense in the league. I think it's very deserving of first team. And Brendan Cooper, Really good year. The Rams O line took a huge jump. They really committed to building the line in the draft after they traded for Gilbert. Um, so they added two interior linemen, and Cooper was already there. And both of these guys were key in the success for the offenses this year. Uh, the Rams really committed to Gurley like they hadn't before, and Cooper was a big part of that. So I totally agree with these picks at center. Um, at the second team guard position, Taylor Moten and Brady Payne. Um, Moten, best guard on the Panthers, best lineman on the Panthers. Um, another team that kind of committed to the run this year in a way they hadn't before with Vaughn Brothers. And Moten is the best blocker for that guy. They run to his side a lot. And then Brady Payne. Um, Falcons O-line is actually very solid this year, despite their record. Um, so it was good to see him get some recognition. Um, speaking of the Falcons, so then the tackles you get Marcus Bishop and Riley Dickinson. Riley Dickinson was signed in free agency to the Bears. And then um, Bishop has been very solid for them at the tackle spot. Um, it's about right to see Falcons on the second team. They weren't good enough to be a playoff team or to really challenge the Saints, but it is good to see them get some recognition here. And that was a really good signing for the Bears. I did not love it at the time because it was a ton of money. But um, I did not know that the Bears were going to lean on Cohen as much as they did. And Dickinson's a great uh, run blocker. Uh, the first team guards, Will Hernandez and Sean Ambrose. So Will Hernandez has been with the Giants since day one. Um, but like I said, with Sin Manning, it, it's it's a completely different ball game here. So he's an elite blocker. And now with the commitment to Barkley, he can really showcase his talents. And then um, Sean Ambrose, one of the another homegrown story for the Lions and the Lions are, despite trading Gilbert, they really built in the trenches because they, they love to run and they love to rush the passer. And Ambrose is part of that new commitment again to running the ball. So there's no doubt. And McBride was one of the least sacked quarterbacks in the league. So seeing him there is great. I go into the tackles. Uh, McGlinchey, he is probably the best tackle in football. So putting him there is right. Um, the offense uses, they use him as a road great as a road grader in the run game. He's a, an elite pass blocker. He does everything for Josh Allen and the Brad Fox, um, another homegrown guy for the Rams. Um, they've really done a good job of building the O-line and Fox, huge part of that. Um, so a couple NFC West guys there. So there's your O-line for the NFC. And finally, your coordinators. So this will be the final part of the NFC and really the final part of the stream. Um, going to the second team, 
uh, Weed and Moji. So Weed will run the offense. We and Moji will run the defense. So um, despite the injury to McBride, despite the injury to his rookie running back Bright, um, Weed admirably put together a very good season on offense. Again, he's a rookie wide receiver who's probably the favorite to win rookie of the year. Um, he traded Gilbert away, which is really ballsy and did a lot with those picks and his offense has really taken a step. And that's why he's going to be a real problem in these playoffs. Um, totally agree with it. Moji's defense. He built it up with the clowny Watt Wilkinson thing um, has been, gone cheap on secondary, but it's worked. He's found guys that work for him. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, um, he's just, you know, anytime you play him, it's unique. It's a really unique experience to play him. He doesn't play like anyone else. He doesn't just sit in zone all day or just blitz you all day or one. He doesn't do one thing to you all day. He blitzes you a lot. Like, don't get me wrong, but it's, it's always different playing him. It's just, I can't explain it, but it's a really different feeling to play him. So I think these guys are 100% right, and they'll be a very tough out in the second game. And then your first team is going to be myself and Cave. Um, Cardinals are the best offense in the league. Um, the way that Cave calls defensive plays, um, despite his 9-7 and seven record, um, the way he plays the game, the way he uses his guys, um, I totally agree with it. I think that I've, I've been very vocal that I've had a problem with him all year in terms of being able to have success with him, against him. The reason I've been doing it lately is because, um, I mean, yesterday it took a kick return and a suspended Josh Allen to do it. And in the playoffs, he threw a couple picks, which he just doesn't do. Um, he just plays defense the right way, and it's very difficult to stop him. And I'm thrilled that he's going to run the defense on the first team as I run the offense. So I'm pumped about that. Um, there's your rosters. Uh, with that, here's the schedule tomorrow. We are going to start the stream. It's going to be a while. It'll be two games back to back. Game one is the second team. Um, begins at noon Eastern tomorrow. Um, I'll have a full roster thing out. So you'll be able to see um, where your players are, what numbers they are, all that crap. But pretty easy to figure out who your guys are. Um, and then game two will follow right after at two o'clock. So back to back two games. Um should be fun. I mean, it's going to, it's going to be awesome to see all of our guys on the field competing against each other. Um, put your bets in the chat on who's going to win. And like I said, there will be something for the, for the two winning teams. So uh, keep an eye on that. Um, I enjoyed doing this. I just kind of figured out how to do like a stream from like incorporating my desktop and computer and all that stuff. So um, I'd like to do more of these with random crap. So if you guys enjoyed this, let me know. But um, yeah, no, this is fun. And the rosters are almost done. They're almost ready to go. And tomorrow's game time. So be there tomorrow, same time. And we're going to run a couple games.